still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, uh, online since 2004, right. it's the one and only yeah. Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name's Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Tuesday, August 30th, 2016, when I'm recording this show, and it's 7.05 p.m. This is day 27 of the Dog Days of Podcasting, where a bunch of podcast nerds attempt to do a show a day for 30 days. So far, some of the people doing it have not done a show every day. Uh, some of us have, and I have. But if, if you haven't and you're participating in the Dog Days of Podcasting, shame on you. Uh, I'm just kidding. I really don't care if you want it. You do it or whatever you want. But I am continuing going on it. I'm actually going to probably do it a little bit. So we have three days left. I'm going dove hunting on Saturday and Sunday. So I'm going to probably, so that would be today's, tomorrow would be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I'm going to probably do at least one extra one because I thought it was supposed to go till Labor Day, till the 4th. So I'm hoping that it goes to the 4th, but I have a feeling that people are going to stop at 30 days. I'm, I want to sit in the in the field while I'm hunting dove and uh, do a show with my gun and maybe uh, blast off a few as... <laughs> While I'm doing a show, so we, I'm gonna, I'm gonna at least do one day of that. All right. Today I am extremely, extremely exhausted from the dog having the puppies and working my ass off. I have really bad sciatic. Enough of that. You don't need to hear my problems. But I'm going to take a sip of this fine Tecate. This is my third beer of the day and my second Tecate. So you know what they say. Third one is always the best. Ah, oh, the first beer I had was a Almanac Craft Pilsner uh, from um, Chris Hat Chris Hatchell, who sent me the money that I, and I bought the the, the Almanac a Craft Pilsner. The first one I had was the Almanac because it's a little bit stronger of a beer. It, it has the same amount of alcohol, four point eight percent, but it has that. Um, craft brewery taste and it's better if you if you're gonna drink Tecate or Coors Light or something like that it's better in, and if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, alternate with a craft type beer I think it's better to go with the heavier beer before you go to the Tecate otherwise uh, I think that the t- that's gonna make the heavier beer taste heavier if you do, if you use if you drink the craft beer afterwards so I hope that made sense. I don't know if it did or not, but I'm going to shut up because I have a show review for uh, an audio comment from somebody. I don't know who this is. Hold on. Hello, caller. 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 Somebody's at the Black Sabbath show. Michael Butler. Chris Capel, the rock and roll copywriter. How you doing? I am super great. Could not be better, Chris. That is- Chris, hold on. Hold on a second, Chris. Back it up before I... Uh, <clears throat> Chris Capel, Chris Capel, the rock and roll copywriter, can, he took me to the Metallica show. He's from... Is he from Connecticut? He's from somewhere on the East Coast, I believe. He came out here and um, took me to see Metallica. Bought me a ticket to see Metallica, and he came over and... Uh, I made him a really shitty dinner. I, I apologize. Was it on Thanksgiving? No, I don't know when it was, but I made him a pretty shitty dinner. It didn't come out that great. I tried, but I could tell it wasn't that good of a dinner. <clears throat> uh, and he's also sent me many, many really, really nice bottle openers. Speaking of bottle openers, um, Rick Moffat friend of the show and friend of mine who works for Disney sent me, I opened these on yesterday from on Mad at Dad, sent me a, a bag full of bottle openers and this really cool little uh, keychain here. It goes, 
little harmonica keychain. So thank you, Rick Moffat, for that. And while I'm while I'm on the subject of opening mail, <clears throat> I got another package here. It's uh, the return address is Tunes, Tilton Road, Northfield, New Jersey. So I don't know. I don't think I've re- I haven't received any promo CDs in quite a while because they usually people stop sending promo CDs. But it's addressed to Michael Butler, not the Rock and Roll Geek Show. So let's see what this is here. Oh, enough's enough. Somebody sent me an enough's enough CD. Oh, I know who sent me this. Is uh, uh, I believe Michael Michael is it Michael Sweet? Uh, Michael Street sent me this enough's enough CD. Huh. Oh, that's cool. I I think I will have to. Uh, maybe I'll have to play this after Chris Capel's Black Sabbath show review. I'm assuming it's a Black Sabbath show review. Michael Butler, Chris Capel, the rock and roll copywriter. How you doing? I'm super great. Couldn't be better. Thanks for asking. That is great to hear. Yeah. yeah. I got a show review, but first I'm going to open and take a sip of this fine Sapporo premium beer. I'll join you. I'll have some Tecate. And you can do the ah. <clears throat> All right. Ah! Here we go. This Woo! is Black Sabbath. I, by the way, I just now finished this Takati, so I better open up the fourth one of the day. Actually, I said the third one of the day is the, always the best, but I changed my mind. I think the fourth one is the best. I mean, I mean, let me confirm that, Chris Capel. Let me by taking a sip of this fourth beer of the day. Ah, yep, fourth one is the best. Way better than the third. All right, back to you, Chris. Icon at Jones Beach Theater on the south shore of Long Island on August 17th. I had texted you the picture under a full moon. And if you've never been to Jones Beach... I have not. um, It's one of those great venues. It it looks over the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the south shore. Refill my... Excuse me. I need to refill my um, Yeti knockoff here. With the fourth beer of the day and the third Tecate. All right, back to you, Chris. Long Island. I spill the beer all over myself. And it's one of those places like Red Rocks or the Gorge up in Washington State where it's like just one of these legendary ones. Although you don't hear a lot about it. It's, But whatever. It was Black Sabbath and Rival Sons on August 17th. Okay. And I went with my friend Metal Matt. You asked me before who I go with. Usually those kind of concerts, I go with him. He's my last single guy friend. And first up was Rival Sons. They are kind of the vintage White Snake, little generic blues band. But yeah. you know they got some growl to their. Guitars a lot of people love Rival so Sons. I mean, I know decent. a lot they of people. Of- I know a lot of people who are just manic over Rival Sons. I really could care less about Rival Sons. I've tried to get into them. I just don't. CDs that came with a one of those import magazines I haven't listened uh, to. Classic it, Rock, probably. And Headliner, Black Sabbath. And I haven't seen these guys or this version for like 10 years now, when this, they were doing the OzFest. This version is, isn't it everybody original except for uh, the drummer? I'm I'm guessing that maybe it's the guy from Faith and More on drums. It's either him or Vinny Apice. Um, I had seen actually three times most recently the Ronnie James Dio version, Heaven and Hell, since I've seen Ozzy. Uh, yeah, I was in Exodus and we toured with the Ronnie James Dio version. It was a great, fun tour. Front the band. Um, the sound was great. It's an outdoor theater. It's I think something like 15,000 seats, and it was it was totally packed. We were in the last row of the upper deck. We had just gotten tickets shortly before. And they had the big video screens, of course, and they, they sounded good. There was a great sound there, not always a good sound. It's, like I said, it's on the ocean, so it's kind of like AT&T Park, where even in the nice weather... You know, it can get kind of chilly out there, but this was just a beautiful night. I've been to some pretty cold concerts. On the video screen, I thought, showed way too much of the drummer, who's 
Ozzy's touring drummer. It's not Bill Ward. Is it Tommy Clufettos? But let me go through the songs and a couple comments, and I'll get the hell out of here. Black Sabbath. Fairies Wear Boots. <clears throat> okay. After Forever. Fairies Wear Boots, and you know that it's right. I'm trying to load this Enough's Enough CD into my fucking computer. It's stuck in the computer, and it will not load. Ah. Uh. <sighs> By the way, thank you, Adam Tereski, for the computer. You saved the show. All right. <laughs> Into the Void. I don't know that one. Snow Is that... B- I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing. No, Into the Void. Is that one of the new album? Which I thought was actually kind of a weak album. And War Pigs. Generals gathered in the masses. But oh. Behind the Wall of Sleep. This one's behind the wall of sleep for my new record. You better go to... I don't know that one. I'm guessing it's from the new record. NIB. I don't know Hand that one. Hand of Doom. Hand of Doom. Rat Salad. With oh, Rat Salad's a good one. Drum solo. Iron Man. I Dirty am Wim- I... All right. <laughs> Children of the Grave. Children of the Grave. I don't know that one. Well, I think I do, but I don't know how the melody goes. And the encore, of course. I'm not a huge Black Sabbath fan. When Exodus toured with the Ronnie James Dio version of Black Sabbath, I absolutely loved it. I prefer the Dio version, believe it or not, uh, because I love Mob Rules and Heaven and Hell. Those are probably two of my favorite Black Sabbath albums. But um, that being said, I'm not a huge fan of Black Sabbath's music. It's it's fine. It's heavy, but uh, eh, I'm a little tired of it. Especially since all these other clone bands came up, you know, under the term stoner rock or whatever, and bands like Orchid, and yeah, it just kind of turned me off to a little bit to Black Sabbath. But they're the originators, and more power to them. Right. And Ozzy, if you've seen him lately, he's kind of puffy and plastic surgery looking. Oh, is he? He's following you know, Tony Iommi, of Sharon. course, is great. His, you know, usual cool self. Let's hope Tony you know. Iommi lives a lot more years. And I love Geezer Butler, obviously. Riffmaster and, of course, Geezer Michael Butler. That's was, right. His middle name you know. is Michael, motherfuckers. All right. <laughs> I told the story many times. When Exodus was on tour with Black Sabbath... I got my picture. I finally got the nerve up to talk to Geezer. I followed him around the entire tour like a puppy dog. So nervous. I, I would sit like right at the same table as them with catering like at dinner time. And I was eavesdrop on, drop on him and, stuff, and hope that he would someday just come up and say hi. He thought I was a good bass player or something like that. Finally, the last day of the tour or the second to the last day of the tour, he came up and talked to me finally and i took my picture with him and i got christmas cards made up that said merry christmas from the butlers <laughs> it was i it made my life complete he's one of my main men on base he yeah. is you know just the man the, sadly this enough adam enough, weakman this enough's enough cd is stuck i'm sorry michael street I, i'm not gonna go play this enough's enough off stage, he's the son of Rick Wakeman, the guy from Yes, and I guess he used to actually play on, he on keyboards? some of these old Black Sabbath records. And my friend, who's a guitar player, I said believe I believe guys- they had John when I when we played when was it John Lord that played keyboards? I don't I maybe maybe now I got to find out who played. Uh, let's see, Black Sabbath. Uh, Dehumanizer. It was on the Dehumanizer tour. Let's see. All right, back to you. I'll, I'll let you talk while I'm searching this out, um, Chris Capel. Even tuned down some of these songs like another half step. And for instance, Into the Void, it just sounded, Ozzy did not sound good on that song. I don't know why they continue to play it because he it just sounds flat. But maybe it's because they had it tuned down and it's not all his Could fault. Be. But it's still. Jeff Nichols was on keyboards when uh, we toured with him. Yeah is not good and if you notice they didn't play anything from their 13 album oh okay well, although they did earlier on this tour this is again the first time i saw people leave and tour. go to the bathroom and it was you know again it was a sold out show it, which isn't always the case at jones beach it you know a good set list they could have 
That's because they said you it's know, the final a tour. Other songs like Sweet Leaf in there or The Wizard. But, you know, no one complained. And I have another concert I'm going to in about three weeks in New York. And this one, you better get your singing voice ready because <laughs> you're going to go to town on this show review. Oh, I can't and wait. And I'm still going to do my co-host probably after the dog days are over. Oh, yes. Please I know I do. I sent you that package last December. So one more sip of the Sapporo. So I owe him a co-host, apparently. And that is it. Chris, the rock and roll copywriter from Connecticut, signing off. All See right. Ya. You, too, can leave me an audio comment or show review. Area code 706-621-ROCK. That's area code 706-621-7625. Or you can do it the... Best way, like Chiaki, my friend from Metal Moment Podcast, says you can record on your voice recorder on your phone and just email it to me at rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. My show is at rockandrollgeek.com. You can find me on the Facebook, r r Geek. Find me on the Twitter, r r Geek. Find me on the Instagram, Rock and Roll Geek. Don't ask. And thank you to everybody for donating to the show. I really appreciate it. I will thank everybody personally on the next full episode of the Rock and Roll Geek Show, which will be hopefully very soon. I'm absolutely exhausted. What am I going to play for music now? Should I find some black? I should probably just find some Black Sabbath since I since this uh, Enough's Enough CD will not start. So let me see if I can find some uh, Black Sabbath. Let's see. Da 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 da. All right, here we go. Fourteen albums. I'm going to play something from. Well, you know what album I really love is the one that um, uh, Ian Gillen sings on. The production is brutally bad, but this album is just. So fucking heavy. So that's what I'm going to close out on. Thank you for calling Chris Capel, rock and roll copywriter. I uh, got a couple of more audio comments to play. If you'd like me to play your audio comments or show review on the on this dog days of podcasting, please send it in. I will I will gladly play it. Thank you to uh, Michael Street for sending me the CD. Thank you to Rick Moffat for sending me the bottle openers. And I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm going to pass out while the Giants are playing. Let's go Giants. Let's hopefully they win. All right, here's Black Sabbath from Born Again with Ian Gillen on vocals. I'll talk to you tomorrow with day 20. What's today? Is it day 27? I'll talk to you tomorrow with day 28. Uh-oh. Is it going to play? <sighs> there you go.
to rock and roll geek train wreck. <laughs> 